why do hummingbirds only hum? Because they don't know the words. All right, guys, so you should have watched the two, um, two videos that I posted prior to this video about the hamburger paragraph. So hamburger paragraph and how to write a paragraph song. So I'm gonna share my screen. And even though, let's see, even though those two videos didn't talk about informative, remember informative is telling us something. It basically is, it's informing us. That's why it's called informative. It's informing us, it's telling us something. It's trying to teach us something. So we are going to use beaks today. We are going to use beaks. We're just gonna look at one of our one of our paragraphs. So you may have done this. I think it was on Tuesday that I asked you to, to basically listen to the book and kind of take a look at how they wrote their paragraph. So we have already focused on a stabbing beak. I think we did a prying beak as well. So let's actually take a look at a skimming beak. So we have the skimmers. Those are our skimmers. Remember, they have the, the beaks that basically it looks like your fingers, the top beak and the bottom beak. The bottom beak is going to be longer than the top. So let's take a look at a skimming beak together. You don't need anything, no composition notebook or anything. So a skimming beak, skimmers. Like the flamingo's beak, a skimmer's beak looks like an accident. The bottom bill is longer than the top. The skimmer puts its backward beak to good use. To hunt, the bird flies with its lower bill slicing below the water's surface. When it strikes a fish, the bird snaps its beak shut, trapping the fish in a scissor-like grip. In this way, skimmers can catch fish without even getting wet. So our goal today, our learning target, is pretty much just to focus on a paragraph. We're just identifying paragraphs. So let's take a look at this paragraph. Let's see if it matches up to those two videos that we just watched. So either that or our informative paragraph sequence. We have the topic sentence, the two detailed sentence, two detailed sentences, and the conclusion. So let's take a look at the topic sentence. We know topic sentence is gonna be the very first sentence and the conclusion is gonna be the very last. Let's take a look at the topic or the focus statement, remember? Like the flamingo's beak, a skimmer's beak looks like an accident. All right, so remember how the topic sentence and the conclusion sentence are kind of the same? They tie into what's gonna be in the details. So in the topic sen sentence, it says, like the flamingo's beak, a skimmer's beak looks like an accident. So what do you think this whole paragraph is gonna be about? Probably about the accident-shaped beak. Let's skip to the conclusion and let's read the conclusion first. In this way, skimmers can catch fish without even getting wet. So it's talking about the accident-like beak. What does the accident-like beak do? It helps the skimmers catch fish without even getting wet. So what do you think the detail sentences are gonna be about? Maybe how, remember sentences, answer questions. So let's take a look at all of these. Let's take a look at all of our our detailed sentences. Let's actually count them first. We have one, two, three, four. Oh, kind of like our two detailed sentences and two detailed sentences. So we have the topic, two detailed sentences, two detailed sentences, and the conclusion. So let's take a look. The bottom bill is longer than the top. So what do you think the following sentence is going to be about? Probably about why. Why is the bottom bill longer than the top? Well, let's keep reading. The skimmer puts its backward beak to good use. Oh, so it, so why does it put it to good use though? So this paragraph is a little bit different. So we know that the topic sentence is like that hamburger bun. The conclusion sentence is gonna be the bottom of the bun. And then all of the details in between, it's gonna be the meat, the cheese, the lettuce, the tomato, the pickle, ooh, the egg, if you guys have ever had an egg on a hamburger. So 
this is a little bit different than the beaks and feathers paragraph that we've been talking about, but it still tells us details, right? So the bottom bill is longer than the top. Why? The skimmer puts its backwards beak to good use. Well, why? We still want to know. So maybe the following sentence are going to tell us. To hunt, the bird flies with its lower beak slicing below the water surface. Oh, so that, but how? So it slices beneath the surface, but what happens next? When it strikes a fish, the bird snaps its beak shut, trapping the fish in a scissor-like grip. So you guys can see that when you write a paragraph, an informative paragraph is something that's gonna be real. An informative paragraph is gonna be something that's real. You can write just regular old paragraph or you can inform someone. And in this paragraph, what are they informing us about? A skimming beak. So our topic sentence, our focus statement is, like the flamingo's beak, a skimmer's beak looks like an accident. So that's gonna be the top button. In between, that meat, cheese, egg, tomato is going to be the bottom bill is longer than the top. The skimmer puts its backward beak to good use. To hunt, the bird flies with its lower bill slicing below the water surface. When it strikes a fish, the bird snaps its beak shut, trapping the fish in a scissor-like grip. And then the bun, what's holding all of that juicy, those juicy details together? is in this way, skimmers can catch fish without even getting wet. So it tells us, it's telling us why the skimmer's beak looks so funny. Why is that? So that way they don't get wet. So let's take a look at our skimmer once more. And I did attach a video, I think it was last week or the week before, about skimmers. So you should have seen that video about the skimmers slicing through the water without even getting wet. All right, guys, that's it. Enjoy your Thursday.